These are coffee grounds. And this is a coffee ground filled crack. I'm here to help you effectively fill the voids and cracks in your wood turning pieces with coffee grounds, but I also wanna pass on the adhesives I use, the tools that I use of going about doing it, the, the business, as well as I wanna show you the method of how I go about doing it whilst running through some tips and tricks along the way, plus some really important safety stuff I want you to keep an eye out for when using this method. My name's Kerry, I'm a wood turner from Brisbane, Australia, and I'm just here passing on everything I am learning about our craft to hopefully help you out wherever you are on your wood turning journey. So let's get into it. So this bowl I turned about a week ago now and I've been checking the moisture throughout its drying time and it was around the 18% and now it's down to 14% moisture. That's perfect for Queensland, 14, 13% moisture is great. Even lower is a little, a little bit better, 12% obviously. Now we're ready to get going in finishing this bowl. What I like using for a filler is coffee grounds, humble old coffee grounds. They're free, ready, readily available anywhere you, you get your coffee from. If you do use coffee grounds, there's one caveat that you really need to keep an eye out for is that they will be wet when they've got the coffee out of it. Of the, you know, had a, you know what I'm trying. So you just wanna make sure that they're nice and dry and how I do that is just grab a, some newspaper on a baking dish and then I just put all the coffee grounds onto that and then let that sit out in the sun and dry off. So you don't want to put it in there wet and then it might get mouldy underneath the glue or something like, you don't want any, you're having a dinner party and you put the bowl on the table and the coffee grounds are falling out of it. That's something we want to avoid. So the other filler that I like using is the simple old dust. The sanding dust that you get from when you're turning a particular species of timber, I collect that and put that aside. Now, try and keep it in a contained area. So I keep it in this little glass jar. It's got a suction lid that goes on the top of it because as you've seen, I've been turning today and you'll start getting little flecks of the color of the piece that you're turning in there. And that gets a little bit annoying, but you'll be able to see that if you've got this nice, nice, coffee filler look going through it and then you've got flecks of all these other different colors it doesn't look as seamless as you'd probably hope for so that's just one more thing to keep in mind and now you're probably looking over here and you can see a whole heap of other stuff one thing to note a really quick easy filler to use is this stuff by starbond and i'm not sponsored by any of these companies here is Starbond and they have a black color and a brown color and they both work really well because sometimes you want the cracks to be accentuated a little bit you want them to stand out a, a, a bit just keep that in mind as something else you can use if you ever see it down the track it's it's worth your while and when you spray it with the accelerator which I'll explain in a sec it won't go white it doesn't discolorate the the color CA glue. And now I'll get to these dentist tools in just a sec, which are vital for doing this or, or a toothpick or something, is these two super glues just here. And I've got the CA by Zap. It's uh, thin, super thin. It looks like water and I'll demonstrate the difference of these two. And then you've got the Darbon medium, which is great. And they, they come with these little tips on the top and you can actually go and purchase more of these tips separately as well. So like, like that, because I find them really helpful because it helps you pinpoint the super glue and this, this stuff is expensive. So you just want to sort of, you know, save as much as money as you can. So difference between this super glue and that super glue is, and I've done a little bit earlier. So this stuff here, when you use the accelerator on it, on the thin stuff, on the zap, it will go white, watch this. See it go off there? So that goes white. And this medium Starbond stuff has less, a less likelihood going white. So I've just put it, I've just put it there. So just watch this. It'll go a little bit white on the outer surface, but it won't go fully white like like the uh, CA glue from, from Zap did. So that's the CA from Starbond. It doesn't discolorate is what I'm trying to get to. So it looks really nasty if you fill the big void with coffee grounds and then you spray it with the accelerator 
thinking you're doing the right thing because I did it a lot and then it would go white. So that's just keep that in the old memory bank and it'll keep you out of trouble. Dentist tools, why do I have them? Why do we use them? So ages ago, my father-in-law was trying to get the O-rings out of different bits and pieces with these trucks and stuff. So we jumped online and got some dentist tools and then we found them because they get underneath the O-ring really easily. So, and then we got onto, uh, you know, getting into our wood turning and things and they become really handy because so when you have a crack like this, okay, and you want to fill it up, you can see that there's little bits and pieces that are still in the void and you have to remove that. And the analogy I like using for when I use this method is of using copy grounds as a filler and super glue. When they build a, when they build a road, I used to work in civil construction for a little bit. When you build a road, you don't just whack all the gravel down at once and then roll the hell out of a big thick mob of gravel. You do it in layers and then you add a bit of water and then you compact it down, add a little bit more, compact it down, so on and so forth. So what, what you need to try and achieve when you're filling your voids like this is give it a clean out first with your dentist tool and you can see how, how effective that is there. So clean it all out and that gives you a nice clean surface, a clean, clean canvas for those coffee grounds to fall into. And the whole compacting analogy is because if you put it all in there and put CA glue onto it and not do it in sort of layers, because we need to return this, you will touch it with the gouge and possibly pluck the whole thing out. And I've learned that the hard way. So you wanna try and do it in layers. And another really point that I nearly, nearly forgot about is if that crack went all the way through to the other side, what you need is a, this isn't the tape that I normally use, I couldn't find it, but is painter's tape. I'll put it on the screen. A type of painter's tape or this might work, give it a go. You want to seal the other side of the crack so you can fill it from the top. It makes sense. So you can fill the top and then that set and then flip it over and then do the other side. And then that way it'll be a full clean filled joint. So, and now I can see that camphor is, camphor is notorious. It's, it sometimes has these like false voids. So they have like a, a false floor where you think it's solid all the way through and then you, the dentist tool keeps sinking in. So I get my thin CA glue because I want that to disperse into the void and fill it up and then it will make it stable for later on. So I just, I just trickle it in there like so and that sort of gets it in around there. It'll start going off on its, on its own steam. And now once I've done that, also I just got a little bit on my fingers, a safety note is if you get this on your fingers and then you use the accelerator and we've all done it, you rub the extra bit of filler that you're using. If you have the CA glue and the accelerator on your skin, your bare skin, it'll, it'll burn. So it might pay to put some gloves on or something like that. I'm gonna get my coffee grounds now fingers stuck to the bowl and I'm just going to put some in there like so and I'll put some links down below of where I get these dentist tools off Amazon and there's a heap of other links that I've put in there now as well just to sort of give people an idea of this type of stuff that I use and some of them are affiliate links and some of them aren't so it's just to sort of help you guys out and you don't have to buy from there it doesn't bother me you just I just want to give you a hand along your journey and anything that I do make, I put back towards this channel. I'm buy a new camera or a new lens or a new light or something like that in the shop, a new tool. So I pack, I pack all that in like that. There's that false floor. I'm just going to put a little bit more in there. And I, all I'm doing is using the, this angled piece of the, of the tool or you can flip it over to a finer bit and you just pack it in. Because like I said, if you when you're turning along, you might hit it with the tool or the edge of the, the gouge and you'll just pull that whole, whole bit out. It's happened to me many a time. So we're gonna use the thin because that'll get down right into all that coffee grounds and go off. So I'm just gonna trickle that in there like so. And now later on, later on you'll find that when you are turning, regardless of how well you've packed it, there might be a little bit that you, it flicks out and busts out from when you've filled it. So just to keep this stuff clean, and that's why I've got it in this jar, 
because I will, I will be able to use it later when I do eventually a little tear out might happen and I need to fi fix the coffee ground. Coffee gr grind, grind, ground. Keep filling it up and I just put it on there and you see the way I, I rub my fingers back and forth over the top. I, I even use my other finger like a compactor and I, <laughs> I push it down. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I, like a, I know it's a thing, a machine, but I use it to put extra pressure so it really forces those grinds in there like that. My dentist tool again, and I just pack it, pack it right in there. And one word of caution, again, I think that's like my second one, is when you are using this, there will be different material that I have found. And that's why it's cool to use the, the little tips, makes it a little bit more accurate. At the moment, I'm not too fussed because I'll be turning this off. But what I'm getting at is, if you use this towards the finished grits, so you're on 240 grit sandpaper, you're about to move to 320, and then you get your CA glue, and then you put it on a, on a spot where you need it a little bit, and you weren't as accurate, and it bleeds in, it'll bleed into the fibers. Sanding, no matter what you do, is really tricky to get rid of that excess bleed. So what I mean is, you're aiming to go here, and then a little bit trickles out like I've done there, like that, and you're on your last grit, you're about to finish the bowl. It takes a lot of sanding that I've found to remove that extra CA glue from around the join. So just keep it in mind, these little, those little tips, these things come in handy later on. Not sponsored, just, just helpful stuff that I wish I had someone telling me back in the day. And yeah, those joins are all now full. We have a strong, bowl and the way I think about it is we've now put the spine back in that bowl. We've put the, the the gumption back into the back of that into the bowl and it's nice and strong. The integrity is back into it. It's like putting concrete in Rio, Rio bar. You don't just put the Rio down and walk away. You've got to put the concrete in it. So that's sort of like what I'm talking about here. We've put the concrete back in now and we are ready to turn this. And I've got some really cool cuts that I've learnt from professional wood turners that I want to show you. So let's go finish this closed form bowl and we'll, uh, we'll turn it together. 